Hello again. This video is going to focus on something that confused me a fair bit when I was getting started with Lisp, and that's how to define projects. Um, I wanted to be able to organize the code that I was writing in a way that was similar to the projects that I was using. So I was using QuickLisp to pull down all these libraries, and they came down, were installed, and brought down all their dependencies, which was fantastic. And I wanted to do that for my libraries, not for just for the benefit of other people, but also for myself, because it's just handy. So we're going to do that right now. And luckily, the guy who wrote QuickLisp has done another fantastic bit of coding and has written Quick Project, which I'll show you now and lets you set up a template in seconds. So let's load up Slime. And we're loading it from this directory. So it's it's going to be in this local projects directory, if you like. Also notice I put it in local projects because it's just a good place to store the projects that you're working on. So what we're going to do is we're going to quick load quick project. We press return here, and if you haven't got it installed, it will go and download and install this for you, and then load it. And now we can just type quick project, make project, and then the name of our project, which in this case is going to be test project. There are other arguments for this, but this is going to be a nice minimal subset we can work with. I'm just going to hit return, and you'll see that it's done. We get an ls over here, and we have our test project directory. cd into that. And we can see we have our template all ready to go. In fact, this is completely valid. So if I just go quick load and test project, oops, it's already loaded. So that was using QuickList, we were able to load our project. And so now you just have to build from here. So let's go have a look at the files that make this up. Well, we've got readme.txt. That's very self-explanatory. Um, so fill that in to inform people what this is. Then you've got testproject.asd. This is the Lisp file, even though it's got the .asd um, extension. This is a Lisp file. Let me open it. That has the definition of the system in. Now, systems in Lisp are roughly equivalent to libraries. If you think of them that way, you're not far off. So here's the name of our system and then some other details. Now, ASDF is the system definition facility that is used most in Common Lisp. It's the de facto standard these days, and we're going to be able to use it just by using Quick um, Project without really having to know much about how it works. So like I said, we've got our name here. We've got serial. Now, I'm not 100% sure what this does, only because it, this has always worked for me so well that I've never had to go and read up on it. What I'm pretty sure it does, though, is specify um, that these components are loaded in order. We'll have a look at them in a second. So we've got description, author, and license, which are fairly self-explanatory. You can fill those in to whatever your want is. And then we get down to components. These, as you can see here, are specifying the files that are involved in our system. So we have package, which is referring to package.lisp. No, we don't have to have the extension here. Then test project first test project on this. We'll go through these in order. So let's have a look at package. Package.lisp has a package definition, the package for our uh, project. Now packages, if you haven't come across them already in Lisp, are namespaces for symbols. And if that doesn't make sense to you, don't worry, I will be doing another video on packages at some point, or have a look at some of the other fantastic documentation that's out there, especially um, things like Practical Common Lisp, uh, which has some really good information on this kind of stuff. There's, there's a ton of places for it. I'm just going to move swiftly on because I'm just trying to focus on Quick Project here. So we have that package. In fact, let me bring that file back up again. If I load up our REPL, you can see that the name of the package is Test Project and it uses the symbols from the Common Lisp library, if you will, on this system. And that gives you all the standard functionality you'd expect. To start working in our package, we can say in package, test project. And as you can see, the prefix at the beginning of our REPL now says the package we are in. Let's close this and we'll look at test project.list. This is where the code for your project goes. Um, so we can just do something simple here. Why not? Spelling mistakes abound. Compile.
compile and there you go your code's ready to go this is how i generally start projects it doesn't matter how big they end up being i generally throw quick pro quick project at it to get a project template and initialize git push it up to github and then ready to go in fact let's open up a larger example so if i go code lisp and kettle this is probably the biggest project i've got on the go at the moment let's open, load up that directory first you'll see a lot of file names that you recognize there's a lot that are just particular to this uh, system but we've got kettle.lisp we've got kettle.asd we've got package.lisp and the readme if we look at package.lisp in here you can see oops inverted the colors there that's not what i wanted to do there we are you can see that i have a lot more package definitions but it's essentially the same this is where you stick all your package definitions i've got kettle.asd which has one additional thing that I should point out. This has a depends on section in the system definition. This is fantastic. This means that when you quick load your project, if any of these are missing, it will go and quick load them also. So that's how all the dependencies get handled. And that really is it. As you can see, the rest of it is just a lot of files that make up the project. Everything's the same. Um, really just have fun. It's a fantastic piece of kit and it will get you going very quickly. And so send some thanks to Zach Bean, who's the guy that wrote it. Okay, have a good one.